Hi guys, good morning. So we are in module 10, Laboratory Information Systems. Hope you will find this interesting. So our objectives for today, discuss all about our LIS, about its functions, about how information flows inside the laboratory, and finally, enjoy the ride. Simulan na natin guys. So class, we have this code here. A medical laboratory is one of the rare places you go wishing to find nothing. As much as possible, class, every specimen that we receive, hopefully we will find nothing because when we find something, it can be a disease. Ganyan. So I'll give you an example from my experiences in the laboratory. So this mom came in. Apparently, this mom um, has a big problem because her baby was is already crying for days. Yeah, and that was the baby um, has diarrhea and apparently she's finding um, she she took a video and she's finding like small worms inside her um, inside the baby stool. Yeah, and so she this mother went to the different laboratories and apparently they found nothing. Yeah, and Finally, they went to our laboratory and we found this one and this egg right here. So apparently, um, no one can, um, in our laboratory, you cannot identify it. So we send it over to BGH and have a um, expert read, um, read our um, findings. So apparently, class, this is Dipelidium caninum egg. So... Dipelidium caninum egg is from when a person will accidentally accidentally eat or intake a dog tick dipelidium caninum. So class, the mode of transmission of this dipelidium caninum is when a person is in constant um, contact with dogs and apparently that dogs has tick. Tapos, once you will intake that tick, yan, you could have dipelidium caninum. So apparently, their baby is around animals all the time and that those animals have ticks. Ayan, nagkaroon ng dipelidium caninum. Yan. So you don't want to find anything rare as much as possible, class, in, this, in, this, in your specimens. But, but apparently, we found this. So we have another case here. So this mom, another mom again, so, so she's just a... Normal looking mom, she sent, she, she, she sent over her stool for analysis and apparently we found this um, parasite, this egg again. And actually no one could, no one could um, identify it because it's not something that we um, encounter in a usual basis. The parasites we um, encounter on a usual basis are hookworms. Um, Entamniba histolytica for amebiasis, um, trichuris trichura, um, soil, hel um, soil transmitted helminthiasis class. Yung usually yung mga nahanap sa soil, yun yung mga um, parasites that are common here in Baguio City. But apparently we found this. And so we, we called our pathologist and apparently this one is isospora belly. Isospora belly. It can only be found so this causes an opportunistic infection. When we say opportunistic infection, it only infects people who have weakened immune system. So if you have a strong functioning immune system, you won't have isospora belly class. But apparently, this mother has weak immune system caused by AIDS class. AIDS only AIDS patients have isospora belly. Yeah. So apparently, this woman didn't know she has AIDS. Yeah. She is a mother, mother apparently. So if one person didn't know um, they had AIDS, all the children, all the rest of the family should find out. Ayun. So yeah, I saw spara belly. You can, you can only find this among people who have weakened or immunocompromised immune, immunocompromised systems. Yeah or weakened immune system. So, ganun. So, apparently, class, you know, we identify so many things in the laboratory. We generate so much information. And that's why, class, here, we're going to learn about your laboratory information system. So, your LIS is involved in storing, 
recording, recovering, and consolidating laboratory information that are produced from the different sections in the laboratory. Actually, class, in, the, in your module, I only included a few of the sections. But class, um, let's just have a review. There are so many sections in the laboratory, depending on how big the laboratory is or the functions of the clinical laboratory. So I just want, let's just have a review on what are the different sections in the laboratory. And LIS is very involved in the sections. So we have classifications by functions. So I hope um, you have an idea here from your PRM list. So we have your clinical pathology section and your anatomic pathology section. So let's start with clinical pathology. So your major subjects, your professional subjects, clinical chemistry, hematology, immunohematology or blood banking, microbiology. So under microbiology, we have bacteriology. Um, what's the study of fungi? Homework niyan. Anong section yun? And um, virology. So, yun, microbiology, we have immunology, so where they test your rapid tests um, yun, for COVID, clinical microscopy section, where, where they study um, urine, semen, other blood fluids, endocrinology, molecular biology, where we study our um, swab tests or RT-PCR, cytogenetics, Toxicology, study of drugs, and therapeutic drug monitoring. So that's clinical pathology. All the information yan, from the pre-analytical to the post-analytical phase in every phases of the laboratory. Yan, laboratory information systems, record, store, consolidate, validate all the information from here. And class, we also have the other part of our laboratory, which is the anatomic pathology. So class, um, usually um, med techs are also involved here, here but usually we, we do the assisting and the pathologists are the one who perform. So surgical pathology, immunohistopathology. So when it comes to staining, yeah, and that's, that's our role. But when it comes to cutting into tissues, that's the pathologist's role. Cytology, so example, pap smear, autopsy, um, surgical pathology or histopathology, forensic pathology. So when, a, when there's a... When a crime has been committed and there's medical legal things that should be accomplished, so that's so that's forensic pathology and we have molecular pathology. So class, all of this um, different sections in the laboratory um, produces tons of information, and we need help by our LIS and to consolidate it, to organize it, to store it. So our goal of the LIS is to conform to the standards and classifications and standard classifications and validity of data set, set by the DOH. So class, the one that regulates or accredits the um, laboratories um, is your HFSRB, Health Facilities, Health Facilities, and Services Regulatory Bureau, HFSRB. Paki-double check nga kung tama ako, class. So, HF, HFSRB is under the office of your DOH. Yeah? So, they set um, laws, um, requirements for the accreditation of laboratories. So, in keeping all the documents, yeah, your BHFS, BHFS is the um, previous name. So, ang bagong name nila is HFSRB is under the office of DOH. They set the standard. So, dapat the information that we produce in the laboratory is according to their standards. Number two, ensure integrity and internal consistency. Yan. So, dapat it's within quality. Isn't it that our last topic, last previous two topics is your data quality? So we must ensure that there is consistency within uh, with our um, results. Number three, maintain confidentiality. Yan, class, and security of the information. Class, in the laboratory, we keep 
highly sensitive information, especially informations that are coming from uh, our blood bank. Yeah, and because we test for H HIV, hepatitis B, STDs. In immunology, we test it as well. Yan, sensitive results, sensitive um, information. Yan, class. So, yan, we should maintain it. So, class, may, um, I have a story. So, my friend back then was working in BGH and apparently, guys, he caught the interns looking at the log books for HIV patients. Yan. So, they were looking at the names. So, these interns were looking at the names. Who who tested for HIV and who were positive for HIV. So, yeah. So, actually, um, so it's the intern's fault because the they were looking at the logbooks. However, um, BGH should have done better, um, have performed better ways of securing their logbooks. Yeah. Number four, allow easy access by the laboratory managers. Easy access by the lab up to the health professionals allows easy access on the laboratory um, data and allows various data to be integrated to the laboratory data. So, example, what allows various data to be integrated? Just like billing, electronic health record will be integrated with your laboratory data. What else, class? Inventory, yeah, materials management. So we have to know how much syringe we have left, or how much um, reagents, we, we arrange, reagents we have left. So we should also have a information system um, integrated to laboratory data. So our purpose of LIS, it will improve the quality of data. So it reduces error. So, up, so we will find what are the errors inside the laboratory. We want to optimize the efficiency, the flow of information in the laboratory. So from the time the doctor will create the order for a laboratory test to the releasing of results, class, it should be efficient, it should be um, smooth, it should be without delays and timely. And at correct, syempre. Next, connects. So to integrate, other data to our laboratory data. So your LIS connects your laboratory data with patient registration, especially if the patient is an admitted patient. The billing and electronic health record provide accurate and timely results, assist in the decision making of health professionals for the promotion, diagnosis, treatment, and management of health. So class, let's just have a review. Yeah. Do you remember this? So basically, yeah, to understand the flow in the laboratory, it's divided into three. Yeah. So we have three main, um, three main functions in the laboratory. So these three main functions is divided into phases. So we have pre-analytical phase, analytical phase, and post-analytical phase. Yeah. So when we say pre-analytical phase, all pre-analytical phase are all the activities that we do before um, processing. And so example dito, patient preparation, sample collection, sample receipt, sample transport, sample processing, the ordering of the nurse or the doctor of the test. Um, that's all pre-analytical. So anything that happens before testing per se. So analytical phase is the testing, yan. So using the microscopes, you're using your equipment, quality control class, that's in your analytical phase. Anything that happens um, in order that we could project pro um, in order that we could produce test results, yan. So qual analytic phase. So to produce Test results, we need to do the analytic phase. Yeah? So running the samples, yeah? managing your instruments, taking care of your microscope, that's part of quality control. That's analytical phase. Yeah? And finally, class, we have post-analytical phase. So once your um, result is finished, yeah? you still have to review it. Yeah? You need to correlate it with the other test results. You have to um, validate it. So usually, two medical technologies valid, validate the result. 
And also, the pathologist or the resident validates the result. What else? Reporting now, the delivering, the reporting or the delivering of results to the doctors, to the nurses, is part of the post-analytical phase. The storing of results and post-analytical phase. Yeah. So that's the lab laboratory workflow. So basically, so, ma so many things happen in the laboratory. And we want to optimize the flow of information so from the test ordering to the re to the running of the samples yeah, to the reporting to the review of results class as much as possible we need to optimize it so there is a really a need for a laboratory information system so your laboratory information systems class as much as possible um, reduces errors, prevents errors, mitigates errors. So what can be the errors in our pre-analytic anal anal phase or pre-analysis? -anal so we have obtaining inadequate or insufficient samples. So class, laboratory information system actually can help um, in... in, uh, in for um, reminding the 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 med tech how much blood the 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 patient will need yan, especially if the tests are already indicated so ayun class itong obtaining inadequate or insufficient sample there can be human errors as well pero LIS could also mitigate the problem next samples taken from the wrong Patient, especially if there is something wrong with identification, specimen placed in the wrong chemical or container or tube, ordering wrong test, identification, this way. <coughs> problems related to the patient or the source of specimen, lack of clinical information when required. So class, you know, some specimens look alike. Example, so one mistake that happened in the laboratory is that um, they were searching for an acid, a result for acetic fluid, yan, acetic or acetic fluid, ASCI, ASCITIC. So acetic fluid glass or fluid that comes from your liver. So um, due to bilirubin, it's also yellow. So apparently, um, some mis mis mistook the acetic fluid for urine. So they process it for urinalysis instead of um, cytology. So, ganun, class, hindi mo kakapalitan yung acetic fluid. So, yan, identification problems related to patient or source of specimen. So, class, um, hopefully we'll learn here how laboratory information system could reduce these problems. Lack of clinical information from your patient, especially if there's no electronic health record available. Analysis bad reagent lot and so apparently the reagent may be expired or what the what the agent or the the people who sell reagents gave a bad a bad one instrumentation failure strong data entry erroneous transcript so when we are um, transferring information or retyping an information yeah. Copying and information. So, transcript means copying. Next, post-analysis. What are the mistakes that ha can happen during the post-analytic um, phase? Delay of the delivery of the results. Failure to report or reporting to the wrong healthcare provider. You gave the results to the wrong person. Now, the, the results are missing. Transcription errors, copying as well. Incorrect results, misunderstanding between the clinici clinician and the pathologist, failure of a clinician to see the report. Yeah. So I just want to give you a pro tip, guys. So misunderstanding of the results by the clinician. Yeah. So if a clinician or a doctor came to the laboratory and there's something wrong, as much as this, um, as much as possible at last, the doctor will also speak to the doctor inside the laboratory, to the pathologist. Silang mag-uusap, silang magkaintindihan dyan. Yan. So class, so here are the functions of your LIS. Yan. So patient registration, how does your LIS participate in patient registration? Yan. So 
so we have two types of patients that comes into the laboratory. We have outpatients and inpatients. So outpatients meaning they just went to the laboratory to have to, to be tested. Um, there's, they are not necessarily admitted patients and we have inpatients. So for outpatient, your LIS facilitates the collection of name, age, address, um, what's the test order. So class for this to happen, um, the outpatient must give a requisition form yeah, or a request form from the doctor and they will give it to us. So class, if pharmacist requires a receta or a prescription um, so that they could give you drugs, same thing in the laboratory class, we need to ask a request form. Yan. Mas maganda class na may request form. And class for inpatient, yan, still the nurses or the doctor will bring the request form. However, we don't have to ask the, the admitted patient anymore about their name, age, sex, address. Um, we could just get it from the electronic health record or hospital registration system. Yan. Next class, test ordering. Yan. So, your physician your will fill up a requisition form. Dapat nauna pala tong test ordering. Whatever. Yan. So, ayos. Nain na to, ha? Fill up a requisition form through the HIS and electro electronically sent to LIS. Yan. So, class, if they have computers in the ward, so the physician could just type it up and send it over to the laboratory. We also have customized requisitions yeah, for outreach clients. So sometimes we, per, we have mobile laboratories yeah, and we just make up a request form for them. Yeah. So once class that your patients were registered yeah, now, so you can now print up print out the phlebotomy, phlebotomy draw lists. So basically this draw list is where all the, all, the, all the names of the patients, their places and the wards, name of the patients, their names in the different wards, the time of collection, class, so, and, their, and what their tests are. So, yun yung mga nandun sa phlebotomy, draw list. And then, class, you could now print out as well a bar, barcode label. So, class, um, better in the laboratory that they're in BGH, they already barcode class. Yeah, dito mo tayo. Sa barcode. Um, so, with your phlebotomy draw list, there is, you can also print out a barcode code stickers. Yeah, and so you could stick it to your tubes as the labels already. So, you have to make sure, class, that the draw list, the code in the draw list is the same with the barcode that you're going to print out. So the errors class um, happens when we when the medtech is already pasting where the barcode is. Yeah? If it's to the appropriate patient. Yeah? So class, we have a rule in the during phlebotomy that isn't it that uh, if you have PRMLS P2, that we we label our tubes at bedside yeah? and we don't go out we don't pre-label our tubes yeah? so before going to the laboratory we can now stick the labels to the tubes no class we don't pre-label our tubes we label our tubes exactly after we have collected it yeah? and before leaving the bedside of the patients that's the only time we label our tubes yeah? para to reduce Errors, okay. And, and specimen tracking, yan. So, specimen tracking um, is needed in the pre-analysis analysis and uh, analysis phases. So, so update the, the LIS if the specimen was also already received in the laboratory, mark as collected to receive, yan. So that you are, mark as collected to receive, yan, or you will mark it if it's collected or uncollected or not received yan, to track your specimen. And once you go to the analysis phase, now you can um, 
track it if it's already processed or not processed yet. So in the analysis, what are the, how could LIS help us? So for the instrument work list, so samples are loaded to the instrument and barcodes are scanned, LIS will electronically send the test orders to the analyzer. And so class, your um, software is all, already um, connected to your analyzers. Yeah. So it will tell the analyzer what are the tests um, which are to be done. And however, class, if it's not automatic, so you can print out a manual work list. So it can be a checklist. List of patient may be printed out with a designated test order. So you will print out um, example class. Isn't it that they do this in restaurants? They print out your orders and give it to the expediter or the chef inside the kitchen. Same thing with the with the work list class. So from the pre-analytical phase, they will print out the, the test orders and will give it to the medtech who will analyze the tests or the, uh, or the um, analytes. Analyzer sends the results to the LIS. So once we have run the, the test, now the result can be sent to the LIS or we can print out a manual result. And sometimes kasi when there's yeah, manual writing or data entry, that's, that's when the um, errors happen. So medical technologies will assess the validity of the results and identify whether there is need for rerun or referral. Yeah. So class B, um, we test. So, MAM results validation. Yan. So, actually, we can do this post analysis. Pero, class, diba? So, we will assess the validity and quality control. Um, re results validation is best happen in the post analytical phase na lang, class. Ha? Results of regular quality control checks are recorded on the results. Of so, class, every day we perform quality control activities. Yan. So, we run a normal specimen and a abnormal specimen and see if there are errors in our instruments. Yan. So, class, we do this every day. Yan. So, before running our specimens for the day, we must perform quality control. So, once we have performed it, we will store it and record it to our quality control files. So, since we are studying, I know, some of my students are studying statistics or epidemiology. So, we are finding standard deviations, deviations from our results. Yeah. Post-analysis class. So, um, we have corrected the reports. So, first, we have requisition-based reports, cumulative-based patient reports and corrected reports. So class, we make so much reports in the laboratory. So yeah, in review of results, we flag results such as critical values. So class, if some results go beyond the reference range, specifically among analytes for the heart, ganyan yung, sumo, yung masyadong mataas class, extreme values. If our test results um, provide extreme values, we have to double check it and printing and reporting of results the physician which is available for reviewing on that on the HIS so class we could show our pathologist the results especially if they are abnormal yeah. so sometimes class um, when the results are already normal we don't have to review it yeah. but if there are flagging if some results go beyond the critical values, yeah, we need to double check. Example, in your um, CBC, example, um, the, the machine flag and it has shown um, excessive numbers of WBCs, you need to manually check it. Electronic reporting to external interface system. So example, the LIS sends charges, the charges or tests performed in our hospital 
information system. So, class, um, everything we do has a charge. Yan, kailangan bayaran ng patient. So, we need to input it. Yan. Class management. So, what are the lists that we perform in the management? So, management per se is the oversight of your laboratory. So, turnaround time reports. So, when we say turn around, it is defined as the time from the receipt of the specimen to the results. So, example class in emergency cases, we need a faster turnaround time, especially if there are stat, stat um, tests. Yeah. So, we have, so to assess if we are going within the turnaround time, we need to record our time. Example, um, a patient came into the emergency department and had a history of um, chest pains. Yeah. And so the patient need, needs a test for the heart. Yeah. So within an hour, um, the results should all should be there. Yeah. And so we should record our time from the receipt to once the results were released to assess if we are within our turnaround time. So that's an act of quality control and that's an act to preventing any delays. Yeah. What else? We, ha we need to know the workload statistics. So as the laboratory manager, you have to know what, when, when is the time um, what day in the week, from Monday to Sunday, what day in the week are there, are there the most, are there? What time in the week has the highest amount of patients that are coming into the laboratory? And in my experience class, Monday, and Monday, there's so many patients during Monday, and especially in the morning. And so the manager needs to know how much workload are happening during the different times of the day so that he or she could schedule um, enough medical technologists during that shift. So example, we have less medical technologists during the night shift compared to the morning shift because that's the time that the laboratory is so busy. Yeah. We have this term class, which is ad hoc report writer, ad hoc report writer. So it allows the medical technologies to generate results and reports without the use of programming languages. So the LIS allows an ease of creating reports. Yeah. Yun pal ang term na yun, ad hoc report writer. We also have yun, um, instrument integri integrity monitoring tools. So we have to record how much, um, how much instrument failure happened during the week. Yeah? Because class instrument failure can result to delayed of results. Yeah? So um, I think I need to go back to uh, drawing, the, drawing the phlebotomy draw list. Ma'am, why do we have to draw, print out a phlebotomy draw list? Yeah. Because especially in the morning class, um, our admitted patients, so we have brand new admitted patients for the day. So class, um, usually the common, the common request of doctors for our admitted patient is to um, prepare them for fasting. And the next day, before breakfast, we will draw blood. So the test results are usually, the test requests are usually glucose, lipid profile, kidney profile, liver profile, yeah. So they, they, um, they instruct the patient to have fasting and as medical technologies before breakfast, we need to extract blood. And usually class, there, um, it's not only one patient we're, go we're going to, um, draw blood from there are many patients as many if the if the hospital is big example bgh yeah each of the medical technologies will have 20 patient patients each yeah so we really need a draw list to facilitate the ease of drawing blood to the different wards inside the hospital I don't expect you to memorize it all, but I just want you to give 
I just want to give an overview on how much information we generate inside the laboratory. So, class, yun pala yun. So, thanks for listening, guys. So, please review my slides. Yan, review the rest of the modules. And I'll see you again. God bless in your second grading examination.